To begin with, to install or create a resource pack on any world, we're going to go into the world that we want to modify. And for this, I'm just going to create a new one. And we're going to install a resource pack. Now, if you don't have one in class materials, we have the invisible item frames resource pack. It's any file that ends with .mc pack. Now, I've already installed it on my Minecraft, so it's already in my resource packs list. So what I'm going to do is go into resource packs, click on my packs, and I'm going to install the invisible item frame pack. This is a really good one to use because if you don't want invisible item frames, you just have to delete one file. So we're going to play so that it generates the world. And then we are immediately going to save and exit. So now I'm going to go into my worlds. And I'm going to export a copy of this. Now you can just do this in your downloads. If you want to create a single folder where you're going to be doing all this modification, you can do that too. So let's do it that way for now. So I'm going to create a folder called Modified Worlds. And again, this is in my downloads folder, but you can create this anywhere. And then it's just a way to keep track of everything. All right, so that has finished successfully. Now that means that I can go in to my downloads folder into that modified worlds folder. And what I'm going to do is rename this. Now, if you are using uh, Windows 11, you would have to go to more options and rename is in there. The other thing you want to make sure is that in your view tab that hidden items and file name extensions are ticked on. That's going to be really important for keeping track of what type of file you're on. So I'm going to rename this to modified world and I'm going to change .mc world to zip. And yes, I want to change it. So now I can extract this folder. And I'm just going to extract that to the same folder that it's already in. And there we go. Now I'm just going to get rid of this zip file so that we can keep things straight. Now, if I go into this modified world folder, we can see that we now have our resource packs folder. And in there is the invisible item frames folder. So we're going to be doing all our work in there. And again, we don't need the license file. And if you don't want your item frames to be invisible, you're not going to need the blocks.json file either. If you do want your blocks to be invisible, you can just leave that there. So now we can start modifying things. And for that, we're going to need our template resource pack. So I'm going to leave this open so that I have my invisible item frames file there. And I'm going to find my template resource pack. Now I have mine in my resource packs folder. And it's a little bit buried in this zip file. So we have to click on the template resource pack, click on M4, click on resource packs, and there's our M4 folder. So to make my life easier for all the rest of this, I'm actually just going to right click and pin this to quick access so that I always have access to it real fast. And I'm going to open up M4 in a new window so I can have them side by side. Now M4 contains all of the files that can overwrite other files in Minecraft. So one of the things that people will often do is just put the whole M4 folder into the resource pack that you're modifying and then delete what they don't want. I find that really time consuming. So what I do is I just add the folders that I actually need. So we can see here we're in the invisible resource packs folder on the left and M4 on the right. And let's say we want to modify the texture of a block. So we're going to create a new folder in our invisible resource pack. And we're going to call this textures. It's important to make sure that it is lowercase and spelled correctly. Otherwise, it's not going to work. If I click into textures in M4, we can see that we can actually retexture a lot of different things. What I'm going to retexture is one of the blocks. 
So we need a blocks folder inside textures. So let's create a new folder called blocks inside our invisible item frames textures folder. So now we've got blocks. And if we go into an M4, we can see all of the different blocks that we can retexture. All right, so let's say I really like how you can see through the light oak trapdoor. Let's say I want to make the dark oak trapdoor like that. So I'm going to copy. So I just right click and copy. Control C would work as well. The dark oak trapdoor from our master templates folder. So I'm never going to change anything that's in, in M4. M4 is where I get the things I'm going to change. And then I'm going to paste that file inside our blocks folder. So there's dark oak trapdoor in our blocks folder. Now I'm going to minimize M4 just to make sure that I don't accidentally modify our master template. And I am going to open Dark Oak Trapdoor with our editor. So I'm going to go with paint.net. Now, for some retexturing, you can get by with MS Paint just fine. But the reason why I like paint.net and similar programs like Pixlr is because you have the ability to add layers and what's called an alpha channel. And an alpha channel is transparency. So if I go up at the top here, I can see here are all of my controls and here is the eraser. And I'm actually going to be erasing the background layer. If I want to get fancier and add other layers on top, I'll just demonstrate that a little bit later on just so you can see. But for now, what I want to do is I want to be able to erase what is in here. Now the eraser is actually a brush. So what I want to do is make it the lowest size possible so that I'm not erasing more than I actually want to. And I believe I want to increase the hardness. Yeah, so if I decrease the hardness, you can see that it's kind of a lot more spread. It's a lot fluffier. So the higher the hardness, the more you actually get to erase what you want. So I'm just erasing what is inside this trap door. And you can see because it is a brush, just like with a brush, the more paint strokes you put on, the more paint will go over top. Same with erasing. So I have to click a bunch of times to get rid of everything that's in there. And I prefer having that smaller brush. It's just a lot easier to control. So I'm going to keep erasing. Now this pattern that you're seeing underneath that looks like a checkerboard, that's not actually going to show up. You might have seen this before if you've ever worked with transparent PNG images before. But that little kind of gray and white checkerboard, that's called the alpha channel. And the alpha channel, oops, I made a mistake there. I'm just going to undo that. The alpha channel is the transparent layer that exists underneath of images. And JPEG files can't capture it, which is why we can't do this in MS Paint. PNG files can and other kind of more complex files can as well, but we're going to be working with PNGs for our trapdoor. So we're just going to erase what is inside of there. And hopefully this is going to work. Sometimes it gets a little bit tricky. We're going to see if it actually works or not. But what I am going to do is I am going to just to be sure that this is actually going to work. I'm going to add another layer. So if I click down on the bottom, we can see we have a bunch of options. We're going to add a new layer and this is layer two. We can rename it if we want. So I'm going to call this panes. So I just double clicked on it to rename it. And I can turn it on or off right now. That's not going to show very much because there's nothing on our panes layer. But if I turn the background layer off, you can see that. And this is how you work with multiple layers. Now it's good to work with multiple layers because it makes sure that if you make a mistake on one thing, that it's not going to affect the entire thing that you're designing. This is really great, for example, for designing Minecraft skin. So I would have a layer for, uh, let's say, a shirt and then a layer for a vest over top. 
And then if I make a mistake on the vest layer, I don't have to redo the shirt, that kind of thing. So what I'm actually gonna do is put some panes in this trap door. So let's see, I'm gonna pick a nice color that I like. And I'm not gonna use the paint brush for this. It works just like the eraser. It's got that kind of soft edge to it and you have to go over it a lot to fill it in. So I'm just gonna undo that. Instead of using the paint brush, I'm actually gonna use the pencil. And that will just fill in the squares that are inside. I'm actually gonna change the blue a little bit. This one's a bit nicer. Now, I know you're saying, Sarah, what are you doing? We just got rid of this. Why are you painting it in again if you want it transparent? And I will show you, but we gotta fill it in first. And again, I'm making sure that I'm working on panes. Sometimes I'll be in the wrong one. You can see it's actually blue that tells you which layer you're working on. And there's really nothing you can do except undo and go back if you make a mistake on this. You just gotta be really aware of where you're doing this. And that's just practice. So I'm gonna fill in these panes. There we go. Now I'm gonna double click on panes again. And you see how there's a slider here we can actually slide the opacity down so that it is mostly see-through. We just have a little bit of pain showing and the alpha channel is going to help us figure out how opaque it is. So if I go down to zero, there's zero opacity. It means you can't see that layer at all. So I'm gonna take this layer up to 72. That's not too bad. And I'm gonna click on okay. And now we have this semi-opaque layer. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save the whole thing. I'm gonna save as. Okay, and I'm in the blocks folder, but you can't see that trapdoor file that we're working on. And that's because this is the wrong file type. We have to change this to PNG. And now we can see dark oak trapdoor and we're going to save over. This is really important. You can't change the name or Minecraft is gonna have no idea what to do with this file. It's got to be the same name as the original file. And then the resource pack will basically tell Minecraft, hey, anytime you're being told to find dark oak trap door, use this file instead of the one that's in the base code of the game. So we're gonna save that. Yes, we want to replace it. We're gonna click okay. And we're gonna click flatten. And there we go. So now we have modified one of our files. So we're gonna go back to modified world. So this is that game file. And you should see DB resource packs. You may have other files in there depending on how much you've actually done in here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna select everything and we are going to compress this as a zip folder. So in Windows 10, you have to right click and go to send to compress zip folder. In Windows 11, I think there's one less step. So we're gonna send to compress zip folder and it will name it whatever you were hovering over when you right clicked it. It's just really important that you make sure you had everything selected. And we're gonna change this to modified world two dot MC world. So we're renaming that zip file into an MC world file. Okay, so now we're gonna move this into our modified worlds folder. Okay, and if I double click on it, it should open it up. Okay, and I'm gonna put my game mode in creative. And I'm gonna grab the dark oak trap door. So let's make something we can put it on. And there is our modified trap door. We can see the blue there, and we can see that it is pretty transparent. So now we can see through the dark oak trap doors. Now, anytime you wanna make additional changes to this world, if you haven't built in the world, you can just go back into that folder, change more, and make a new zip file. 
But if you change the world and you want to save those changes, like if you built a really cool thing, then all you would have to do is go exit out the game when you're done. And then export the game again. And then do exactly what we did the last time. Rename this to a zip file, extract the folders, and then add any new retextures that you want to add.